All of astrophotography can be summed up into one phrase, garbage in, garbage out. Keeping this one phrase in your head at all times when you're doing an astrophotography will be the one thing that improves all of your images. And here is what it means. It means if you aren't doing your due diligence and doing the best job that you can taking photos, that your final image is going to reflect your initial poor effort always. This is a pretty important idea for pretty much everything else in life too, but without getting too philosophical, we're just gonna break down what this means for your astrophotography and give you five critical tips for doing the best with your due diligence and making sure you aren't putting in garbage and getting garbage out. I know way too many people who have really expensive premium gear but don't do their due diligence and as a result they're always just polishing turds and trying to produce good images from bad data despite having the best of the best equipment and we want to try and avoid that problem. So here are the most important five tips for doing your due diligence. Number one, fix your technical problems like bad guiding, bad focus, bad polar alignment. There's a million YouTube tutorials from these. I don't have tutorials for everything, but YouTube's a great resource. Everything is out there for pretty much every question you could have. I would recommend taking some partly cloudy or full moon nights and just working on your technical problems and trying to get those solved. If you don't fix them, then you won't be taking good images or you won't be taking good data and your final images won't be good at all. So number one, get your simple technical problems out of the way. There's solutions for them. You just got to put in the work and do them. Number two is a bit more spicy and more all-inclusive, and this is don't fight uphill battles in your astrophotography. So there's a reason the ESA didn't put the VLT in London. There is a reason that Dole doesn't put their banana plantations in Antarctica. There's a reason I don't shoot LRGB from the city or on the full moon. If the moon is right next to my target, I simply don't shoot my target. And if there's subpar conditions like terrible seeing, high clouds or haze, I just don't shoot at all. I only troubleshoot. For me, an uphill battle is one that if you face it head on, the more you try, the more you're going to lose. I don't mean to say you can't take good photos from places with light pollution or bad conditions. I'm just suggesting that you could take better photos under better conditions. And we want to try and avoid these battles where we can waste time throwing ourselves at them for diminishing returns or no gains at all. Let me give you an example. So let's say we wanted to shoot the integrated flux nebula by M81 and M82, a super faint dust cloud that's very difficult to capture. If you wanted to do this from the city, sure, you could go ahead and knock out 200 hours of exposure time and luminance and get kind of a shoddy, noisy result. I would spend all those hours driving somewhere else with no light pollution. And in a way, I would avoid facing this big uphill battle of light pollution. It's the same reason I only do narrowband when I'm in the city, because I can actually still shoot good images. I'm evading this big uphill problem that's going to end up being a huge time sink. And that's what you should try to do. You should try and take evasive action against these problems that are simply impossible to solve. So. Just in general, if you want to do astrophotography from the city, do narrowband. If you live somewhere that has one clear night a month and you want more clear nights, go remote. Is there haze or high clouds out right now? Then just don't shoot images. Spend that time doing something more useful like addressing your technical problems. We can use our time to do things productive instead of wasting time capturing bad data. I don't want to make anyone feel bad about their geographical situation. I'm just trying to be honest with you and illuminate the fact that it's like running headfirst into a, a wall that you won't be able to solve by spending more money on telescopes. Nothing will make the clouds go away. Nothing will give you better saying. We're at the winds of geography and weather conditions when it comes to that but I would avoid trying to avoid fighting these battles that are gonna be a huge waste of time and instead spend that time more productively trying to figure out your troubleshooting, doing narrowband instead of LRGB from the city, driving out to a place with dark skies instead of wasting time in the city. You know, you need to avoid these problems, not try and face them head on if you're trying to get the best images possible. Now, if you're trying to do astrophotography for fun, then knock yourself out. There, there is a lot of fun I've had doing astrophotography and LRGB from the city. So <laughs> if fun is the goal, knock yourself out, do whatever you want. But if your end goal is taking the best images possible, 
there's some realities we have to face in that process. Number three, fully calibrate your data. Do your darks, do your biases, and especially do your flats. I know so many people who don't do their flats, and even a lot of people on social media who flex the fact that they don't do flats, they just use AstroPixel Processor to pull the gradients out. Again, this is polishing a turd. You have a way to perfectly model all of the problems in your optics, your camera, what have you. Do your due diligence, do your darks, do your biases, do your flats. Get rid of problems that are brain dead easy to solve if you just take the time to do them properly. Doing calibration isn't hard at all. I know I don't have a YouTube tutorial for it. I will eventually, but it's brain dead simple. You should be doing all of it, especially at your flats whenever you're doing deep sky images. Otherwise, why are you spending all this money on telescope gear, essentially wasting it by not using it to its full potential and doing your due diligence? Take your flats, please. Number four would be know your equipment and know its limits. Your telescope and your other gear is a tool that was designed for a specific job. Know what tools you have and know what jobs they were designed for. My Rockinon 135mm lens is a beast for wide field mosaics and super large images. However, I wouldn't use it to shoot a planetary nebula. My narrowband filters are excellent for shooting emission nebulas with hydrogen, sulfur, and oxygen. They're not so great for shooting galaxies, so I would not use those things for something they're not intended for. In the same way, my Star Adventure is great for portable wide field astrophotography. Is it gonna handle my big telescope? No, it's not. So you need to keep in mind the specifications of your equipment, what it was designed for, what job it's supposed to do, and use it for the job that it's supposed to be doing to get the best image possible. A lot of people are excited to try and push the limits of their equipment and do something different with it that maybe it's not intended for. And this can lead to some interesting results sometimes, but in general, know what your equipment is for, know its purpose, and optimize your shooting around the purpose of your equipment. And be careful wasting time if you're trying to do something with it that it wasn't intended for. Number five would be maximize your integration time as much as possible. And by this, I mean just shoot as much as you can. Good data is good data, but without enough good data, you don't have a good image. So what you need to be doing is making sure that you can get the most time possible out of your equipment. And what this usually means is just trying to make it easier for you to do astrophotography. It would be something like automating your setup so you can get more sleep. Maybe cut down some trees in your yard so that you can get more view in the sky and shoot your target for longer. Or maybe even get a scope cover so you can leave your scope set up for longer amounts of time and save yourself setting up multiple nights in a row in your own backyard. All of these things can make it easier to get more time, get more sleep, and just shoot more astrophotography in general, which is going to go a long ways when you're trying to shoot better images. Oftentimes, people will say integration time is king, and that is certainly true. The more time you have, the more you can make out of an image. So those are my five tips for doing your due diligence in astrophotography in the theme of garbage in and garbage out. I just wanna remind you all that astrophotography is more so a journey about personal improvement than comparing yourself to other people's photos. Everyone has their own conditions they started with and we must do the best we can with what we have. So that being said, don't get down on seeing other people's images with tons of integration time and super expensive gear, but be more concerned about how you can improve your own work and yourself to get better photos instead of looking at other people's photos. Again, garbage is relative. Something that I may think may be garbage data may be very excellent or an awesome result for someone else. So it's about improving your own results over time to get your best images you can, not uh, what is an absolute measure for garbage. The term garbage is relative. So don't let anything discourage you. Get out there, keep shooting, keep trying to do the best you possibly can, and just try and make improvements every time you go out and shoot. Just try and do a little bit better, and over time your images will slowly become good. You'll get more adept, and you'll just start shooting better photos. So I hope this video was helpful. Uh, thank you all for 10,000 subscribers. It feels super good to finally <laughs> hit a milestone like this after so much work. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if you have any tips about doing your due diligence you want to leave in the comments or if you have any questions yeah feel free to drop them in the comments and I'll catch you all in the next video